Hello, dear ones. My name is Justin Peters. I hope that this finds you and your family doing well today. I want to thank you so very much for joining me for this podcast. I would ask that you watch the entirety of this uh, because we're going to be talking about Sid Roth. And Sid, if by some chance you are watching this video, please, sir, watch it. Uh, Sid Roth, many of you know, airs some of the looniest stuff that you could possibly imagine. All of his guests claim to shuttle back and forth between heaven and earth with great regularity, fantastical claims. Uh, and by fantastical, I don't mean fantastic as in great. I mean in, I mean in the sense that they are Looney Tunes claims. I mean bizarre stuff. Just go to his YouTube channel. Any of you who have watched my channel or Chris Rosebro's channel or Stephen Kozar's channel, you've seen a lot of this. Just the the looniest stuff you could possibly imagine. Well, um, not the least of which is in the year 2020, uh, Sid Roth had dozens of prophets on his program, 100% of whom prophesied that Donald Trump would win the United States presidential election of 2020 and would serve a second consecutive term. Literally 100% of them said it. Some of them even gave downright down to the exact percentages with which Donald Trump would win. Well, obviously that did not happen. Obviously Donald Trump is not serving a second consecutive term. Joe Biden is the president of the United States. And so in January of 2021, in fact, this is uh, an episode that was aired on his YouTube channel, January 27th, 2021, Sid Roth came on, he did a program, and he was uh, it's kind of a, an explanation of sorts as to what happened. How could he and all of the prophets get it so very wrong? And uh, I'll put a link to the entire video. You can see it down below in the description. If you want to watch the whole thing yourself, you're certainly welcome to. But basically he said um, the reason they, pro they all prophesied that is because they all wanted Donald Trump to win so badly and and so they just missed it. But uh, that doesn't hold water because all these people claim to be able to hear the voice of God. And for months and months and months leading up to the election, they all claim to hear God's voice on the election. And obviously they did not hear God's voice. And so he he did apologize for it. He made He made an apology of sorts, but his apology did not go nearly far enough. I, I want to sincerely ask, it's my pastor's heart that's, that's really the strong thing promoting this. I, I want to sincerely ask for forgiveness for saying Trump would serve another term. And the reason I say it did not go far enough is because he never apologized to God. As, as bad as it is to lead people astray, to lead your followers astray, as bad as that is, what's far worse is the reproach that he brought upon God, the reproach that he brought upon the name of Christ, putting words in God's mouth that he did not say. He didn't just say Donald Trump would win. He prophesied Donald Trump would win. Um, he was not sorry for that, as evidenced by this video, because in the very same video, he goes on to make a bunch of more prophecies. And he's going to prophesy that the then upcoming year of 2021 was going to be the golden global glory year. And a lot of amazing things are going to happen in the year 2021. And so we're going to take a look at those things that he prophesied would happen. And we'll see if he gets them right. Now, um, at times here, there will be some, there will be, there will be sarcasm. There'll be a little bit of uh, comedy, but I want you to watch it all the way through because it does get very serious. Uh, Sid Roth, yet again, proves himself to be a false prophet. So let's go to this program that was aired again, January 27th, 2021. I know that, and this is what I call it, you just got to bear with me because God put it in my spirit and I'm supposed to say it publicly, so I'm releasing it publicly. I know that the golden global glory, I like saying it that way, Gold, let's try and say it, it's a tongue twister in a way, <laughs> golden global glory is coming this year. This year, this year meaning the year 2021. So did the golden global glory 
manifest in the year 2021? Well, let's see what he has to say the golden global glory was supposed to contain. And my whole issue is the harvest, worldwide evangelism, to the Jew first. And I see this year being the greatest year we've ever had in Jewish evangelism. I really do. Why? Because of the golden global glory from what's going on. But if I got some good news for you coming up, coming up, the golden global glory will be here this year. Isaiah 60, 1 to 3, describes it in the Amplified Bible. It's what's happening right at this minute. It's better than the newspapers. So the year of the golden global glory, he said it'll be better than the newspapers. And I... <laughs> Have you looked in a newspaper recently? Uh, they're, they're not so great. So it's not a very high bar to be greater, you know, be better than the newspapers. But uh, he says the, the year 2021 will be the year of the golden global glory, and that will be the greatest year of Jewish evangelism in the history of the Christian church. And then he references Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3. And he said that passage is pointing to this 2021 year of the golden global glory. Well, let's take a quick gander at Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 through 3. It says this, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of Yahweh has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and dense gloom the peoples. But Yahweh will rise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Dear friends, that's not talking about the year 2021. It's not talking about any year of golden global glory. In fact, what it is talking about is the millennial kingdom. Now, it's interesting that Sid Roth would reference this because Sid Roth's eschatology is premillennial. He is dispensational in his eschatology, and so he should know that this is looking forward to the millennial kingdom, the thousand-year reign of Christ, physical thousand-year reign of Christ on earth. That is his eschatological view. Not talking about the year 2021. So he apparently doesn't even rightly understand his own theology dealing with the eschaton. Casting demons out? I see auditoriums so filled with the glory of God that the people will walk into the auditoriums filled with demons and will walk out with spirits of infirmity having gone, with, with, with spirits that have been harassing them the whole life because the golden global glory will just swoop in. So he says that he sees in the year 2021 that the golden global glory will, will see... Uh, stadiums and auditoriums filled with people that are just racked with all kinds of demons, but the, the golden global glory will just swoop in and they'll, they'll leave without those demons. I hadn't seen that. Have you? But not only that, when you're walking down the street, people that have demons the demons will leave. They won't want to be in your presence. By the way, that means they'll leave you. They won't even be able to harass you anymore. I mean, can you picture them trying to get by the, the global glory of God, the golden global glory? Uh-uh. No, they ain't getting past the global golden glory. Now, they, they might slip past the, the localized lavender glory. They might slip past that one, but not the... Not the global golden glory, uh-uh. Millions of miracle ministries are about ready to be raised up. There'll be mass miracles, but there will, well, you have seen nothing until you see glory miracles. Millions of miracle ministries coming in the year 2021, not millions of miracles, mind you, but mi millions of miracle ministries coming on the scene in the golden global glory year of 2021.
Have you seen them? I hadn't seen them. I haven't seen one miracle ministry come on the scene in 2021, much less millions of them. And friends, if that if that was even close to being true, it would be dominating the headlines. I mean, you, you wouldn't be able, if there were millions of genuine miracle workers out there, I'm talking apostolic miracle workers out there. I'm talking Acts chapter three kind of miracle workers. I'm talking raising the dead kind of miracle workers, millions of them. I don't care how leftist and how anti-Christian the mass media is. They would not be able to ignore that. They couldn't, the enemies of, of Christ and his church could not ignore the miracles that Jesus himself did, and they could not ignore the miracles that his apostles did 2,000 years ago. And if so, if that was even remotely true, be rest assured, it would be all over the news, and it would be absolutely irrefutable. So there haven't been millions of mini, millions of miracle ministries coming on the scene. There hasn't even been one, not one. We'll be walking in that type of health, but I do have to tell you this. You're going to have to wear the mask again, but not for coronavirus because the glory will be so bright, people won't, even sunglasses won't protect them from the glory. And it'll be radiating from you and from me. Seriously, I, that doesn't even deserve a comment. The salvations that we will see will be, listen to this word. I got it from uh, my friend Keith Ellis, a great prophet. The glory will trigger evangelism that will be incalculable. It won't be a million souls. It won't be a billion souls. It is incalculable. Okay, so Sid Roth says that 2021, the year of the golden global glory, will bring in not millions, not even a billion souls. He said it will be incalculable. And... Lest you think he just kind of, that was a, a misspeak. He was using hyperbole. You know, he was just throwing out some big numbers just to say that, no, there's there's going to be a lot of people saved, not necessarily a billion. I mean, that would be ridiculous, right? Uh, he wasn't using hyperbole. He wasn't, he wasn't just throwing out a number kind of haphazardly because he said the following, a good, I'd have to look at, but at least, probably at least 10, 15 minutes later in the program, uh, he said this. Billions are going to be saved. Billions. Billions of people will be saved in the golden global glory year of 2021. Dear friends, to take the most generous interpretation of that, generous towards him anyway, to be, to be the most generous towards Sid Roth, uh, billions, that's a B with, that's plural. So 2 billion bare minimum. 2 billion people got saved in the year 2021. Dear friends, there's only 7.9 billion people alive on the entire planet right now. And so that's a quarter of the population. Sid Roth is trying to tell us in the year then in the year 2021, a quarter of the entire world's population got saved. That's absurd. That is ludicrous. That's not even remotely close to being true. He's a false prophet. This gold, globe, uh-oh, I, I did it. <laughs> Global golden glory is going to usher in repentance beginning at the house of God like the world has never seen before. So the golden global glory year of 2021 will usher in the greatest period of, of repentance beginning in the household of God, beginning in the, in the church that the world has ever seen. Oh, how I wish that that were true. But if it was true, then you know where that repentance would have begun? It would have begun with Sid Roth. 
It would have begun with Sid Roth and all of the dozens and dozens of false, no, uh, hundreds of false prophets that he has been parading on his show week after week after week after week for decades. That's where it would begin. And you know how we would know that these false prophets have truly repented? When they all come out and say, I've been lying to you. All the times that I have said that God has spoken to me, he hasn't spoken to me. All the times that I've said God has shown me stuff, he hasn't shown me anything. I've been lying to you. I've either been flat out lying to you or I've been so completely deceived myself that I realize now that I'm not qualified to be in ministry. All of the people with the outlandish claims that they have made, all the people who claim to, to go to heaven regularly would come out and say, I've been lying to you. I haven't been to heaven. Not once. I've never been to heaven. I've just claimed to have been to heaven so I could sell you my books and my DVDs on the Sid Roth program. That's how you would know repentance had truly come to Sid Roth and all these others. There is no repentance. Something that I, I was thinking of, maybe I should write a book on this. Whatever happened, this would be the title, Whatever Happened to the Fear of the Lord? It's missing. Where is the fear of the Lord? You say it's missing? Indeed. Indeed it is missing, Sid. Sid, you for decades on your show, you have been airing objectively proven false prophets. You have aired thousands of false prophecies. You have put on your show some of the most ludicrous, insane people on your show with the most bizarre, outlandish claims. People who claim to shuttle back and forth between heaven and earth. In, in the most bizarre stuff, proven false prophets, proven charlatans and hucksters. Remember the, the oily Bible thing? And you've been making merchandise out of people. You have been, you have been selling their books and videos, DVDs. Every program you do is a 30-minute infomercial for lunacy. And you say you're going to write a book? on the lack of fear of God? You could write a book on it, all right, just not in the way you're talking about. And the fact of the matter is, is that you don't see, it's, it's just not a big deal for you and all your guests to put words in God's mouth that he emphatically did not say. It's just not a big deal. A lack of the fear of God indeed, indeed, Sid, I'm concerned for you. I am concerned for you because even in this video, a video in which you somewhat apologize for all of the dozens and dozens and dozens of false prophets that you had on your program who prophesied that Donald Trump would win and serve a second consecutive turn, all, you know, all of those, remember all that? And you somewhat apologize for that. But in this very same video in which you apologize for the false prophecies that were given by your guest about Donald Trump in that very same video you make more false prophecies the whole golden global glory year of 2021 that you said all these things would happen none of those things happened and this wasn't an educated guess on your part this was a prophecy you said God told you this would happen none of it happened Sid the irony here is that you and all of your guests would look at me, a cessationist, and say, I don't believe in the Holy Spirit. I don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. To the contrary. I am so confident in the person, in the power of the person of the Holy Spirit of God that I do not believe someone can be indwelt by Him and be in this level of deception for decades and feel no conviction about it. To put God, words in God's mouth that he did not say for decades. 
You've done it thousands of times and feel no conviction about it. Something is wrong. The Holy Spirit is not a weakling. If He is strong enough to save us, He is strong enough to deliver us out of deception. And as a cessationist, I believe that people who are truly indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, when they sin, and we as Christians do sin, but when we sin, it grieves us. It grieves us because we understand that our sin grieves God. And there's repentance there. But there is no repentance with you. You continue to do the same thing you've always done. To this very day, you continue to err outlandish, stupid stuff that brings untold reproach on the name of Christ. The world is laughing at this stuff. There are entire YouTube channels devoted to showing how ridiculous this stuff is. And I, and I don't mean, by the way, my kind of YouTube channel. I'm talking about atheist YouTube channels. They air your kind of lunacy on their atheistic YouTube channels, making a mockery out of Christ and making a mockery out of Christianity. There's no shortage of material, unfortunately, because you keep giving it to them. Sid, I'm concerned for you. I'm, I'm, am I mad at you? I'm, I'm mad at what you do. I'm mad at the reproach that you're bringing upon the name of Christ. I am righteously mad at that. But see, I don't hate you. I don't hate you. I hate what you're doing. But I don't hate you. I'm very concerned for your soul. Very concerned. Please, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Some serious issues there. Things that you really need to deal with. And you need to get on your face before God and cry out for forgiveness. Because you have spent the majority of your life airing stuff that's insane. That's not of God. I've watched your show a lot. I have rarely ever heard you really deal with repentance. I don't guess I've ever heard you. I've heard you use the term repentance. You did in this video. But as far as delving into it and what it really is, no. No, you don't. You don't ever exegete scripture. You don't ever deal with doctrine and theology. Every show you put on is one outlandish claim after another. And that's not of God, sir. That is not of God. Please, repent. Confess your sin. Throw yourself at the mercy of Christ. Ask Him to forgive you. Repent. And if you come to Christ in a true, godly sorrow over sin... He will forgive you. He will. And that's what I want for you. And if you truly repent, the evidence of that repentance will be that you shut your ministry down. That will be the evidence of your repentance. Because if you're truly repentant, you'll, you'll see. And I say the same thing for Benny Hinn. I say the same thing for Todd White and Kenneth Copeland. I've said the same thing to them in other videos. If you truly repent. If repentance, genuine repentance does come to you, is granted to you, you'll realize the magnitude of the reproach that you have brought upon Christ and you will realize that you are not biblically qualified to be teaching. You cannot teach sound doctrine. You cannot refute those who contradict it per Titus 1.9. You're not able, you don't meet the biblical qualifications for an elder, for being in ministry, for someone who should be teaching in a public platform. You don't. And so if you truly repent, the evidence of that will be that you'll confess all of the lunacy that you've been airing and you'll shut your ministry down. And you'll join a good, doctrinally sound church. You won't be behind, you won't be in front of the camera anymore. You won't be behind a pulpit. You'll be in front of a pulpit in a doctrinally sound church sitting and learning. And I want that for you. I really do. Okay, dear ones, until our next time together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with you all.